Today is off the cuff video day, which isn't really a thing, I've just uh, kind of decided it was a thing. We're going to try something a little bit different today. Actually not that different, um, slightly different. I saw this thing on Reddit earlier and it looked curious to say the least. Uh, it's called Project 2000 and somebody's managed to transplant a bunch of Windows 2000 stuff into Windows 10. Which is fascinating. So I've got it running in a virtual machine here. We're going to just go through the whole process and see what happens. If I keep rambling now, then we're not going to actually get to install it. So let's give this a go. We've got Panther 2K. I'm not entirely sure what this is. But this looks absolutely nothing like the standard Windows 10 installer. So already, already we're in Windows 2000 territory here. Uh, actually, no, let's do Legacy, just because it's a VM, it'll work better, it'll be fine. Uh, never mind. <laughs> let's do UEFI. No. No. F9. F8. Okay, well, this is a good start. Well, this is curious, it doesn't actually display the disk drive, which is good. Uh, what on earth do we do? Oh, this flash. Uh, oh! That'll be why, because it's the... What? Alright, it's boot from CD. Listen, you're getting the full experience here. Okay, well, Panther 2K. It's Windows, it's Project 2000, everybody. It's great, it's working perfectly. Okay, let's do this. Let's do Legacy. <laughs> what a faff this is turning out to be. Alright. This is what happens when I do off-the-cuff videos, huh? No planning, no nothing, just... Right. Legacy. <gasps> We've got a partition, everybody. Fabulous. Okay, about blooming time. Yes, that that one will do as well. Well, anyway, it's it's taking about three years to copy the files, so uh, we'll wait for it to be done and then we'll continue the video. How about that? Right. Well, <coughs> with uh, <laughs> it's been sat at four percent this whole time. I unpaused the recording and I uh was just about to say, I'm not convinced it's doing anything. And then it does this, so... This shouldn't take more than a minute to complete. I'll be the judge of that. Another ten minutes almost, and uh, a fat lot of nothing appears to have happened, so... Uh, I do wonder what exactly is going on here, if anything. Okay, we're trying this again, because I missed part of the setup guide, well, the, the guide to running this, it's not very well written, I will just say, it's a bit of a mess, but it does mention if you run into the BCD thing hanging, then you can run a command to bypass that, supposedly. So we'll see how that goes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Is it actually going to reboot? Mm, it's not rebooted within 10 seconds, so I guess I'll just have to reboot. Uh, okay, it looks like it's booted from the hard drive. Let's see what happens. So, in theory, we should be getting the Windows... Oh! Right, let's just have a, have a quick look at the archive page just to see if, what else I need to do on first launch. Rigid it as admin. Find the win logon key and change the content. Oh my goodness. Find oh right, it's already open. Change the content from. Change user init to just classic slash start dot cmd. Okay. We are we're we're already immersed in the Windows 2000 experience. We had the startup sound. And now we've got getting started with Windows 2000. We've got the classic cursor. Um, click an icon, blah, 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 blah. Discover Windows. Well, okay. So this is this just the 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 actual application from Windows 2000? We get the Internet Connection Wizard, which is fascinating. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, well, we're connecting through a LAN. I connect through a LAN. And then it doesn't do anything. Okay, well, probably because it's already connected. Okay, we've got a lot to unpack here. But we, 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 won't, we won't worry... We won't worry too much about uh, making everything super up-to-date because otherwise we'll be here all day. 
we need to just have a proper look at this, which does already look remarkably like Windows 2000. It's it's quite uncanny, really. First of all, st well, let's let's sort this out. Install VMware tools, and then wow, um, we are high res, delightful. So, let's have a proper look at this and just see what they've done to make it an authentic Windows 2000 experience. So, we've got the right-click menu, which which looks, I mean, it looks mostly all right. I don't know if it's just a visual error, given the fact that we're running it in a virtual machine without any proper graphics drivers. Um, that could be the reason why we're seeing a weird white box appear whenever we right click on anything and that happens wherever we right click we right click on files it's because they've tried to implement the uh, the effect that happened in uh, 98 and beyond well 95 probably and beyond where the right click menu sort of expands outwards so while they've managed to do that it also generates a white box which looks a bit crappy Bit of a shame. Um, also, doesn't that seem to happen on every single right-click menu. Uh, doesn't happen here, for example. The start menu looks authentic to me. Windows 2000 Professional, it says here. Uh, we've got the log off and... Well, run just looks like run. Yeah, it's the same text. It's the same window, really. It's just a different icon. So that's, that's relatively simple. However, I do note that they have this. Which doesn't seem to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> the what's this button doesn't do a whole lot. Anyway, so that's the start menu and, and presumably, yeah, we've got programs and it does it open properly. We've got the welcome to Windows thing there. To be honest, we'll probably delete that, but it doesn't really matter because this is only a demonstration. Um, we've got all the Windows 2000 software, including Pinball, the uh, classic 2K version of Solitaire, which is... Uh, Ah, interesting. Okay, we're going to have a proper look at that in a second. Um, so, weird thing, when you've got a, a application open, let's just try it with the Internet Explorer here. When you've got an application in focus, on the, on the taskbar it does come up as blue, which is a bit odd. I also note with some dismay that this has appeared to have pinned itself to the taskbar. There's uh, some teething issues, I feel. Uh, so yes, this is this is just the Windows 2000 version of Solitaire. That works in Windows 10 anyway. We've got Windows Update down here. I, is that going to actually do anything? It's in the it's in the system tray, but clicking on it doesn't seem to do a great deal. This is just the ah okay P Network Manager. I'm not sure where this is from. Well, it's it's a third party thing, but it's been made to look like. It belongs in Windows 2000, which is good. Oh, but something I've just noticed is when you go to the oh, never mind. Um, we had the we had the Windows 10 uh, title bar for a moment there. Don't know what happened there. We've got the old safely remove menu, which I mean, there's nothing nothing connected, so it's not going to come up with much. But maybe we could test that. Uh, I can add a removable drive from VMware. Okay, it goes ding. And, okay, it doesn't show up there. Well, now it's connected, so we can see what it looks like in Explorer. So, let's let's just go down the list here. So, I've got my documents, which is empty. Uh, let's suppose that makes sense. We've got my computer, which is not empty, but we have got the USB drive. That does show up, and that's got my... Uh, well, that's connected to my SD card, so we don't need to worry too much about that. That's just got some videos on it. Uh, can we eject it from here? We can, and it comes up down here. What else have we got? Well, we can make... I, I find it curious that we've got the Documents folder, but it doesn't... You'd think this would go to the User folder, which has... Just go back. We've got Music, Pictures, and Videos, so you'd think that would link to this. Um, alas, alack, it does not. But never mind. It still looks authentic. We've got the... F okay, folders... Does work. Okay, okay. Good stuff. That that looks good. I am really curious about this this version of Windows Explorer though, because uh, I don't know 
I mean, we can we could dive in and and see what we can find in, in the uh, in the C drive in a bit, and work out exactly how this is all this is all put together. But let's just minimize this. Oh, we don't get the the classic minimize that that shrinks it down. Again, there's, there's probably only so much you can do. But yes, this this looks this looks correct. It's even installed it in WinNT, although that's not strictly true because look, it's in the Windows directory. But all the icons are correct by the looks. We even got the help program. We've got a few remnants from Windows 10. We seem to have what appears to be 2000 Notepad. Yeah, we've obviously got 2K Paint. I won't. I won't go like dead in depth with this stuff because you you already know what it looks like. It's all stuff from Win 2K. Clock.avi. <laughs> okay, this we need to uh, figure out, I suppose. Great. So, Windows Media Player does not seem to work. Oh, never mind, it does. So this is the inbuilt media player that was with... I want to say it was with me first, but me and 2K were sort of parallel to each other anyway, so... Either way. Uh, but... Oh, well, I asked it not to open it with that every time and it decided it was going to anyway and this is the version that came later on with the one that had the skins so this one this one's got the skins uh, and this is what it's supposed to look like they've obviously applied a skin the classic skin so it looks authentic but I mean this is authentic to me this is this is this is what would would have been available as well this this to me is is Indicative of the time that this was released. So I don't know why they would try and hide that, but whatever whatever doesn't matter Windows media player works Seems to work fine with this random AVI file. This is not skinned is it? So this is this is Windows 10 stuff here. We've got the I mean, it's it's just like Windows 10 in that it, um, The UI is all over the place. That's Explorer I do wonder what they've done with this because that that does appear to be look it's the 10.0 version created in 2021 so it is it does appear to be a current version of explorer and it's got cast to device and stuff i mean i think this file menu is uh, dynamic anyway but the help screen is not very helpful and um it doesn't look anything like Explorer from Windows 10. I can guarantee you that because I've got it open open here. I do notice that it's got the the GUID or whatever it's called to link to certain uh, Directories, so this is the my computer one looks a bit strange But you're probably expecting things like that if you're running this network places. Oh Okay, so what's happened here then this appears to be going into control panel Uh because we've got we've got weirdly we've got the Windows 7 style explorer now which eventually turns into the 2001 and this is just a network place I don't think it's gonna find anything uh, yeah it's um seems to take forever to load it presumably it's doing a load of patching of this window on the fly this is of interest. I mean, we've, we've already seen connect to the internet. It doesn't really do anything. However, tutorial? Ah, so this works. So they've included this 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 stuff. All right. But we won't, we won't worry about that because that doesn't do what we need it to do. Internet Explorer. Now, it bills itself as Internet Explorer. This is clearly a very, very heavily... I mean, we've, we found out earlier because it's, it's Firefox ESR, presumably. So it's a very, very heavily modified version of a, well, it's a fairly, fairly, fairly recent version of Firefox, if I, if I recall. And as you can see, it's got tons of uh, add-ons and scripts and stuff. So the thing is with Firefox, you can do a lot of modification just by faffing about with JavaScript. So that's what they've done here. They've, they've got a custom title bar text. For example, new tab override, which does what exactly? It goes to Microsoft. Okay, thanks. There's a lot of stuff going on here, obviously. It doesn't show the tabs bar unless you've got multiple tabs open. But really, it just it's all this stuff is from Firefox. It's just, again, themed and skinned to look like 
uh, Windows 2000. In fact, it doesn't even have a theme, it's just the standard theme. It's just been modified really heavily by the user scripts, which is quite clever, actually. Um, so if we were to disable all these, it would just look like Firefox. I do notice that Microsoft.com isn't loading, though. Let's just try... So the old networks... Uh, you've got stuff here, the downloads... I mean, that's quite good. It's got the print and email, and presumably all this stuff works. Now, this I am really curious about. We're going to have to have a proper look at that. Uh, downloads are just downloads. That's Firefox stuff. History is just history. Uh, favorites or bookmarks. Search, that does the find thing. So th I can't remember what that did in Internet Explorer. I want to say it did actually uh, do a web search, and the icon would suggest that. This I am really curious about. Outlook Express. So is this actually... Outlook Express. It does appear to be. It's the one from um, XP Service Pack 2, apparently, but I'm sure that was version 6. Then again, well, it is version 6, literally. It's from 2004. Uh, so possibly this has been modified as well. It's probably just a bunch of DLLs that you can change images from. This is just Outlook Express. Uh, I mean, there's no... Nothing, nothing really exciting there. Uh, I have to wonder if it would work with any email address that I happen to have, but I don't have any details on hand at the minute, so... And I don't know if I trust just shoving my email address into this when it's downloaded from the internet. That's That seems like a, a cyber security nightmare. It's Outlook Express, they've just included that. Okay, what else have we got in the start menu then? So a lot of it's actually hidden. They've not got Explorer Patcher. I'm assuming this is Open Shell. Yep, Open Shell. We've got that there. And you know you can do a, a huge amount of things with Open Shell. You can you can modify the entire start menu uh, to make it well to make it look like Windows 2000. You can change the text. You can change. I think this is going to be an image actually. This on the side here. So we can change that to Windows 98 if we if we so desired. And it, um, to be fair, it does look relatively authentic still can change it to Windows 2000 as advanced server. How cool are we? Yeah, Windows Power. I don't know what Windows Power is. Actually, it does appear that they've uh, just nicked that from. Yeah, look. Slewy. Is that in is that in Windows 10? They've they've just borrowed that from 2K then because the one on the one on Windows 10 actually has XP icons in it. Interesting. So I wonder if that's where the the start menu icon comes from anyway. Presumably, if we were to shift click on start, oh, no, they've disabled that. <laughs> uh, can I uh, shift click opens Windows Start menu? I'm just curious, just curious. Okay. So, the normal Windows Start menu actually doesn't work at all. Fascinating. Supposedly, yet yeah, they did say that uh, Windows and S would open the search thing. <laughs> What's all this? Well, that's all gone. <laughs> they, should, uh, they should have thought about that. Hmm. Explorer Patcher, and that's doing all sorts of things. I mean, we could probably look through the entirety of the settings, but we can just trust it to do its thing. I do wonder how we've got Quick Launch here, because I didn't realise that the, the toolbar thing was still still existed in Windows 10. I guess it does. Okay. And so that's literally just a folder then, effectively. And if we were to go, well, if we were to go up and find location. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought it was going to show me where the shortcut was. We can resize this. Um, oh, oh dear. <laughs> Whoopsie. I may have uh, resized it a bit too much. It's fine. We can fix that. We can fix that. It's all good. Speaking of Windows, let's just have a quick look. Winver. So, it claims, curiously enough, that it is Windows 2000, so they've done some heavy modification there. What if we go to my computer and go to properties? You see this, this goes to the Windows 10 settings and it gives us all our system stats. This is Windows 10 Internet of Things. I do believe I have a key for this somewhere, which is uh, Interesting, so maybe I could try and activate it. I don't think I see that there's much point though. But yeah, we've got the whole Windows 10 settings. However, I would be interested. I mean that just that will just go to settings. What happens if we go here though? We've got control panel modern. 
But then we've also got just control panel. So what? So this is the Windows 7 style. And this is this is just a load of shortcuts. This is literally a directory full of shortcuts. Which is interesting. So we can go to the sounds thing. A lot of this is just the UI, so we're going to have Windows 7 UI with the classic theme. Which again looks the part. It looks the part enough. And we've got all these classic icons too. I, I do find it curious that the, the sound scheme is called XP. I suppose there were a few of these were kind of missing in earlier versions, but they should have all been there in 2000. So I'm not sure what the what the plan is there. We've also got Windows default modified modified, which is just brilliant. Um, so that's that. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, this is all stuff that would have been in. Uh, Windows 7 anyway, and Windows 10 by extension. This is the, the 7 one, and actually we've got, we can find out exactly what's, um, what's going on here. Weird that this is a separate start menu entry. Bonus pack documentation, audio converter 3 limited edition, 7 start taskbar tweaker. I do seem to recall I used this at one point. Folder options X, so there's all sorts. Customization for Windows programs. Okay, so they've nicked a bunch of stuff from here. Well, I say nicked. They've uh, they've used a bunch of stuff from here. Got Media Player Seven and the Power Tide. We've got whatever this is. Utilu IE Collection. Uh, it's contains multiple IE versions. Okay, well I'm guessing that they were trying to get an older version of IE to work, but they're so old now, and I think they think they made the right choice using Firefox. What is this? Kero Toolbar? Okay, yeah, they've really tried to get IE to work properly, haven't they? With an ad blocker and all lot. But, uh, yeah, I'm guessing that didn't pan out. It does appear to be trying to load something. Activity Throbber? Ugh! So, next, let's uh, see what else there is in here. Because, uh, again, it's it's interesting just how much of Win2K they have actually brought in. So that's just character map, that's probably transplanted from Win2K. Windows update. Oh, hello! What's happening here? Actually, this is running in <laughs> IE 11, of all things. So what the sh what's this then? Oh, this is Internet- what?! So we've got Internet Explorer, the Firefox edition, and then we've got IE11 here, which is going on about Edge, whatever. What about CMD? So this, this appears to be from 2K. It's hard to tell, isn't it? It's got the version number, but then it's probably just reporting the one that is in Windows. Uh, we've already seen the games, accessibility, a lot of this um, may well be... Oh, that's, that's from XP, all right. It's impressive how much still works, especially given that this is a 64-bit um, version of Windows. What's not interesting is the fact that this won't go away. I don't know how to unpin. There's no option to do so. Shift, right-click. Ah, there we go. Shift, right-click, and we can unpin it. Perfect. So what else is there to look at? I mean, it's it behooves me to try and install something era-appropriate. So... I'm not expecting this to actually get us anywhere, but let's just try it and, and hope for the best. See what happens. Set up plus. Okay, let's just put this in. Okay, install now. Let's uh, let's do a. Let's just install now. We're not going to faff around. Uh, okay, install. If this works, I'll be very impressed, because this is, again, this is era-appropriate software for Windows 2K. So, if this works, well, again, I'll be very, very surprised, because it is still Windows 10 under the bonnet. So, I doubt that software compatibility or anything like that is going to be any different, realistically. But we can only try it. We can only try it. Can we not? So, it's installed. Oh, hey! It, it works! <laughs> it works! Well, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? 
Okay, well that's that's pretty good. So, can we save? Yeah, of course we can save. Of course we can save. Oh well, cool. Uh, that probably just works in Windows 10 as well then. <laughs> oh boy. Now that's indicative. That's what it would have looked like if you had a very slow computer back in uh, whenever this was made actually about PowerPoint. 2002. Okay, so it's a bit later, but I want to know what else is on here because there was a C, there was a classic directory. So already there's a bunch of auto hotkey scripts. All right, all right. First startup. What's this doing? Import registry stuff. Set DPI. Um. So that's basically just a bunch of registry stuff. All right. Iconoid is here. Um. That's doing icon stuff. I wasn't actually sure. Presumably, it's just it's literally just for icon um, placement and things to make sure that you get this on first boot. Makes sense. What else have we got? We've got oh, we've got task manager, the classic task manager. If I go down here and open this one, yeah, it opens that. Huh. Got a load of network shortcuts, that's a bit bizarre. Network tray icon. Task bow. Windows taskbar. What's this? Set explorer icon view. There is all sorts in here. What's this? Fe. Uh, details. Oh, there's no details. Got free sale and uh, classic theme tray. And control alt revived. Well, there's the thing. So. They did uh, make a special mention of this because if we press Control Alt Delete, well, it does that as it's Windows 10. However, if we press Control Alt End, it does that. So that's rather impressive, isn't it? Uh, presumably, we can do all this stuff from here as well. So lock the computer. I mean, it does go via the 10 uh, UI. We can probably log off and shut down change password doesn't do anything task manager just opens task manager but it is in the background huh what's shh shh is is nothing apparently <laughs> shell icon size manager that's important make sure everything's pixel perfect p network classic what's this otvdm that does ring a bell and ah, visual styles okay so, presumably this is to get the classic theme. Uh, that's just control panel, that's the that's the folder. That's the directory that we came across before, that's... Oh, that's going to take forever to load, isn't it? We'll have a look at the rest of this, we've got this Kero stuff, NetShell. Shell for network, oh, from React OS! Naughty! Ha! Very cheeky. Some other stuff, I don't know what this is. ST object, start. That opens all this stuff. Uh, the classic taskbar. We've got the... Oh, wait. That's going somewhere else. See? Classic taskbow free. Well, that doesn't exist. It's just called taskbow. Strange. So we've got taskbar tweaker look. 7 plus taskbar tweaker. Again, it's doing all sorts of things to make the taskbar as close as possible. And they've done a, a remarkably good job, actually. Aside from that one thing where Firefox pinned itself and this being able to extend beyond the start button, which I've just done again. And I can't get it back. Other than that, they've done a, a remarkable job at the taskbar. Temp folder to simulate separated do not delete. <laughs> okay. System. Ah. Oh, okay. So if we run... Oh, gosh. Well, now the taskbars are just in a bit of a mess, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll just we'll run with it. If I do system... Ah, well, I mean, this is, again, this is accessible in 10. I'm just curious as to how similar it actually is. System. Yeah, all right, so, it, I mean, it's the same. It's just, again, different icons. Just out of curiosity, performance, uh, font smooting. I'm sorry. The, what? Oh, okay, this is, uh, this is something different, though. Where's this come from? Because this isn't, this is not the standard Windows thing. Most of it is, but we've got font smoothing. We've got visual effects. If disabled, disable some visual effects settings. I really should not make fun of people spelling because 
English may not be the first language. But we've got this as well. Checked fade, unchecked slide. That's not uh, how it should look. Shadows under mouse punches there, whatever. Thumbnails, I believe that was a 2000 thing, but it probably doesn't work properly with the icons. Well, I don't know, let's just see how it looks, actually. Out of curiosity. Ah, okay, that's what it does. It does the Windows 7 style, okay. Forget that then. But I'm sure there was some sort of thumbnail support in 2K. I would like to know if we've got the original display settings. So if I go properties... Wow! Okay, we have! Sweet, so we've got uh, all the classic 2K wallpapers. Fabulous. We've even got the patterns, look. I am amazed. We'll have no wallpaper, we'll have a pattern. And uh, of course, there's a sus one. Wow. The patterns do not appear to work, though. That's... I mean, I should have expected that. The active desktop is totally different to how it was. But images... Images seem to work fine. I'm surprised, actually, that you don't get the, the classic Win2K wallpaper. However, I do have it somewhere around here. What's this? <laughs> wow, so they tried to do that whole thing with the Explorer. I'm guessing that didn't pan out either. Yet. What can I open it with? Windows Photo Viewer. Ha! Huh? Set so as desktop background. So it works if I do it that way, it's just this classic display thing doesn't like JPEGs, which is a bit bizarre. Never mind, we've got it now. Uh, screensaver? Doesn't come with the screensavers? Come on! Come on, you should have Come on now. However, uh, the graphics driver, whatever. Oh crap. <laughs> So it doesn't think there's a wallpaper currently, which is a bit bizarre. Now, important, check this out. We've got Windows Aero. Actually, we've got a massive amount of options here. Look at all this. We've got all the classic uh, colours. Um, my, I liked Marine. Marine was really nice. That's what I used when I had 2000 installed many years ago. Uh by that I mean like 2015 or whatever. Does it work though? That's the big question of the day. Does it work? It flipping well does and all. <whistles> Even the fonts. The fonts. Ch oh, this is the biz. The, uh, oh, that's the, these are from Windows 7, aren't they? What I am also curious about is, can we do anything about, uh, you see, the icon changer thing. He used to, it used to be in properties and it would be under effects and I don't know where you find it without that because, well, all these icons are set in a very particular way. Alright, so it does still exist. Right, hold on, I know where to find it now. So, if we go into settings, it's probably going to have a moan at me because of the lack of activation, but... Oh. Aha! Hold on, hold on, hold on, because look, I mean, curiously, this is now, um, this is a different desktop wallpaper screen to the one we saw before, and it's got more wallpaper options, including this one, this is the one I was looking for with the person, uh, belly flopping. We've got, I mean, it, weirdly it doesn't give us a, a preview in this. Paradise, that was it. Yeah, that's the one I remember. That's that's Windows 2000 for me. But there we go. We've got the icons. And, well, like I said, it does appear that they have borrowed some DLLs or modified some DLLs. Oh, have they, though? Or have they just used what's already there? Because a lot of the DLLs in modern Windows, they still have these icons in them. Um, and you could tell this is a, a modern thing because we've we've got all the Windows 10 like Wi-Fi and connection icons and stuff. Well, so it's all using stuff that's already there. Fascinating. With desktop cleanup wizard still there, and in, amazingly, they've still got the active desktop stuff here. Something that actually that I want to find out is. Oh, 
<laughs> Something's happened with Explorer. It seems to have broken. Oh, well, that bit hasn't. But, hmm. We need to find out if this works. It won't look, work on this version of Windows. Aha. Uh -huh. And yet. Oh, no! Right. Well, because of the changes to the user interface, we can't actually enable compatibility mode. That's a thing. Well, I was just going to try the desktop theme thing, but you know, the, the application that you got with certain versions of uh, Microsoft Plus and was built into 98. However, it doesn't seem to want to work, which is a bit, a little bit tragical. So that, I think, just about covers it. We could keep going in depth and see exactly what they've changed, but I think you get the idea. It's a very remarkably good um, and well thought out modification to Windows 10 that, that works really, really well. I'm surprised, but it didn't really fall apart at any point while we were using it. I mean, there was only that thing with Control Panel that, uh, that caused any issues. But beyond that... It worked remarkably well, and you know, I mean, I have uh, I have a lot of grievances with the way Windows has gone over the years, and using this classic UI on a modern system, I think there's a, I still think there's a place for it, and I would be very happy if I could just if, rather than it being because the thing is I had to install this directly from its own disk. And as he saw, it was Windows 10 Internet of Things. If there was some sort of just really simple patch just to make any version of Windows 10 or even Windows 11 like this, um, with all the... I mean, not with, it doesn't need all the specific applications. I don't need the Windows 2000 version of WordPad because that's just not necessary. I'm never going to use that. And the same with the very heavily modded Internet Explorer Firefox, which, while impressive, again, I don't think there's much real purpose to it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure there's somebody out there who really loves using that. And Outlook Express isn't, isn't super necessary. But like the rest of it, the user interface and the start menu and... Explorer, I mean, I just love that the Explorer is like this. It's so simple and it's really usable. I think I would really enjoy using that and I will probably use it on my main system because it doesn't seem to... I mean, you probably find some issues with modern software and really I, I could have done with trying some more modern software and seeing if that worked. But having said that... Uh, we've not run into any real friction with any of the uh, the things that we've tried. I'm tempted to just say that probably modern software works great. And a lot of stuff is just going to run anyway because it's Windows 10. I think it would be good to try and run this on a system where you just, you, you're just... You're doing normal everyday things. Um, just to see how well it would work in a production environment. I know that it's not like you're probably not going to get away with it on your works laptop or whatever. But on your home PC, like when I do video editing and stuff, or when I play when I play games for the stream, I'm using my computer. I'm doing a lot of modern, running a lot of modern software on here. So it would be really nice to see exactly how that worked. Uh, I'm not going to install it on my main PC, and obviously it's not going to be especially performant under a virtual machine. But it would still be really, really cool to see that in action, if at all possible. But as you can see, the modern, modern-ish software works great. Because it's Windows 10. Under the hood, under the bonnet, it is still Windows 10, and Windows 10 things are still just going to work. We could probably even get apps working if uh, if I felt so inclined. It would be interesting to see that. Uh, but that would take a lot of uh, configuration and I can't really be asked with that at the moment. So uh, I will put a link in the description um, to the archive.org page. Frustratingly, you don't download it from archive.org. There's a separate link that you download it from. But all the instructions are there. Read, 
the archive page very carefully, like I didn't, and you should be able to get this installed. Uh, and I would be curious to hear your thoughts and experiences using this thing. But I, I am actually really impressed. Uh, more impressed, in fact, than I thought I would be. So, congratulations to File Shredder and who made this whole modification. You've done good. And I hope to see future versions that are even better. Anyway, that's all from me. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you all for the next one.